You know what else is interesting to me here, and I know it sounds like a dreary subject, but it's not here in Australia or in the U.S. is interest rates. Now, on Wednesday, the U.S. Oh, Federal yes. Reserve held a, a meeting and the interest rate stayed steady for a sixth straight meeting, keeping the level at a 23-year high to fight this stubborn, sticky inflation. This would be, to me, Adam, you're an economist, a big problem for the Biden administration if they can't get these rates down before the election, and yet they've also got the problem with inflation, which is killing people. Yes. Yeah, certainly that's right. Look, uh, President Biden has been saying for months now that inflation's been falling, everything's going back to normal, and he even said that he expected interest rates to be cut by the end of the year. And, of course, now, as you well know, we had that meeting this uh, this week. The, the Federal Reserve governor spoke, and he basically said there's a good chance they won't go down this year, and, indeed, they could even go up. Uh, but... I mean, for me, this you know this gets to the whole point that, that you know the government economists, the central bank economists, they really have no idea about the future path of the economy. I mean, you remember a few years ago they said that all their money printing would not lead to inflation, and of course it led to the biggest inflation in in you know, 30, 40 years, 40 years. Uh, you know, that's in Australia too, uh, which yeah. has caused huge damage. And of course, then you know, more recently they said, oh, it's all right, it's all going back to zero, and of course it's not. So, so they really have no idea. Uh, you know, they're just they're just completely guessing. And and you know, for ordinary people, that's you know that's not very good news. Uh, you know, there's there's you know, no security about the future for their own finances. Well, and I mean, you know, our Australian viewers here will also be watching this very closely, too, because the talk I'm hearing, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, is that the Australian um, Reserve Bank is going to have to follow, essentially, the American uh, bank's lead on this. So if rates don't come down there, they're not coming down here. And we've also got an election coming up either later this year or at the start of next year. Yes. Yeah, certainly for the past, you know, three, four years, all through COVID, you've seen the central bank in Australia basically copy the US central bank with a, you know, with a lag of a few months. And I think that's, you know, that's probably going to continue. And then the other problem though that Australia has to worry about is the currency now is so weak, the Australian dollar. If you've been overseas recently, you, uh, you would have realised that, especially to the US, everything's very expensive here. And so if they don't lift interest rates in Australia, then that means the Australian dollar will fall more. Uh, and that's, you know, probably something that they don't want in the long run. Yeah, no, that's another that's another issue. As someone who just came back from the U.S., I know exactly what you're talking about. But in America, though, back to the U.S., consumer confidence, that is also dropping for the third straight month in April. And I'm hearing basically that the Biden administration is no longer talking about Bidenomics because they don't see this as a <laughs> winner right. for them on the election yeah. trail. Is that correct? Yeah, look, that's true. I think I think some journalists did a tally, and and I think uh, last year every month he was mentioning Bidenomics at least you know five or six times a week in his speeches, and now that's dropped to zero. Uh, so so I think there's a good reason for that. You know, it goes to the interest rate question. You know, of course, the inflation question. You know, and the confidence question. And also, you can't blame people for being you know, for being confused or uncertain about the future. I mean, things are still pretty bad if you're on a normal income in the US. You've got a used car prices are still 40% higher than they were a few years ago. House prices are up 40%. You know, that's all very well if you own one, but but if you don't, then that's, you know, that's awful. And of course, then you've got just your general price increases, food, etc. Uh, so people are a lot poorer. They have every right to be furious.